I've studied the science of living longer for over two decades, and nothing I've seen is as mind-blowing as what I'm about to share with you. Researchers have found something in nature that can repair DNA directly, and they found it in the deep, deep ocean. In theory, if we can transfer this to humans, it would change everything we know about anti-aging and longevity. We could live a lot healthier for a lot longer, like way longer than mother nature wants us to. And if that's true, the big question is, should we live longer? If you could extend your life by 50 or 100 years, would you want to? Or do you think there's a point where that's taking it too far? Drop a comment below and let me know what you think. Just remember, I'm talking about extending your life for 100 years where you feel as good or better than you do now. Then what would you do? Deep beneath the Arctic, there's a creature that doesn't just live for decades. It lives for 400 years, and it's not a myth, it's a real animal. This predator was alive before America even existed, before Newton discovered gravity, before electricity was a thing, well, a thing we knew about anyway, and it's still swimming today. It doesn't get cancer, it doesn't age like humans, and nothing hunts it. Its body is immune to time itself, and now scientists have discovered its secret. It isn't immortal because of some freak environmental factor. It's because of how it repairs itself. Scientists call it the Greenland shark. For years, scientists dismissed the Greenland shark's longevity as just an abnormality. People thought it maybe was because it moved slowly or it lived in cold water. But when researchers could finally study its DNA, they found something incredible. See, as humans age, our DNA starts to break down. We get weaker, sicker, slower. But this shark has a built-in repair system that stops it from happening. Researchers found that the Greenland shark has a remarkable DNA repair system that's unlike ours. The shark cells contain massive duplications of DNA repair enzymes. Think of it like having a repair shop in your body which fixes bad DNA over time. Most animals don't have this, but the sharks do and it works better than any other animal on the planet. It doesn't just slow down aging, it prevents cancer, reduces cellular breakdown, maintains organ function for centuries. The shark's heart, for example, can beat for over 400 years. It's still pumping blood with the same efficiency as it did when it was young. This is not normal. In fact, it completely contradicts one of the biggest assumptions in aging science, that time itself is the enemy. Because if this shark can live for centuries with minimal biological decline, then aging, it's not an unavoidable process. It's a problem of faulty repair mechanisms. And that means it's a solvable problem. And the question is, if this DNA repair system works so flawlessly in the Greenland shark, why don't we humans have it? Or why hasn't every species evolved the same way? The answer to that question reveals something critical about how life itself is designed. And it brings us closer to understanding how we might be able to hack human aging. Every living organism operates on a biological budget. Energy is limited and every species has to make a choice. It can either burn energy quickly and grow fast and reproduce, or conserve energy for the long haul. Most living things, including us humans, prioritize fast energy use. We grow quickly, we have kids early, we die early. In simple words, we'd rather pass our genes on to the next generation instead of live longer ourselves. So it comes down to evolutionary trade-offs. Animals like cheetahs or mice also burn fuel quickly. But others like tortoises and whales, they slow everything down. They prioritize repair over reproduction. So they trade speed for survival. The Greenland shark just took that to an extreme. Instead of chasing speed and efficiency, it optimized for survival at all costs. Its body operates in slow motion. Its metabolism is one of the slowest of any animal. It moves at an almost glacial pace. It doesn't even reach sexual maturity until it's over 150 years old. How's that for puberty? To put that into perspective, a Greenland shark born in the early days of the American Revolution would just be reaching reproductive age today. And it's not alone. The bowhead whale could live 200 years because of its highly efficient DNA repair mechanisms. 
The immortal jellyfish can reverse its biological clock. It can revert to a younger state instead of dying. Evolution has proven that longevity is possible, but it always comes at a cost. In exchange for extreme longevity, Greenland sharks sacrifice speed, agility, and reproduction. But if longevity is a problem of cellular repair, it's a problem that can be engineered. Humans have these longevity molecules that help us with DNA repair and cellular function. And scientists have figured out ways to boost these molecules in the human body. So the question is, if aging really is just the result of flawed repair mechanisms, why aren't we fixing it already? Why isn't this the number one priority of the medical industry? The answer is not scientific. It's political and it's economic. Because solving aging means rewriting the entire structure of society. Right now, some of the most cutting edge research in genetics and biotechnology is working to replicate what the Greenland shark does naturally. Scientists have already identified those key longevity molecules in humans like NAD, sirtuins, and telomerase. In fact, researchers have found that boosting NAD levels in mice can reverse markers of aging, restore energy, improve cognitive function, and extend lifespan only by 30%. In human terms, that's probably 30 years. Gene editing technologies like CRISPR could allow us to copy the Greenland shark's DNA repair mechanisms and insert them into our own cells. In fact, I have had longevity gene therapy, just not to do this yet. Some scientists believe that within our lifetime, we could develop genetic therapies that radically slow down aging or even reverse it. Or other scientists like me believe that we already have, and I've already used gene therapy that has reversed my age by nine years. But there's a reason every major pharmaceutical company is not rushing to sell treatments that fix DNA. Diseases like cancer, heart disease, and diabetes make billions of dollars every year. There are massive industries that sustain entire sectors of healthcare. And what do all of those diseases have in common? They're downstream effects of aging. Aging doesn't just happen for no reason. It's our body's repair system failing. Our DNA gets damaged, our organs get weaker, our cells start to fall apart. If we could stop or even reverse aging, we wouldn't need many of the drugs that people buy today. And that's a problem for Big Pharma. Big Pharma makes its money selling medicines that people have to take over and over and over forever. But if one treatment could help you live longer and healthier, it would shake up the entire industry. Pharmaceutical companies spend hundreds of millions of dollars to bring new drugs to market and they need repeat customers to justify the investment. Life extension is not their priority. A one-time treatment that extends lifespan by decades would be the biggest financial disruption in human history. And that's why longevity research has been largely privately funded by billionaires, biotech startups, and a handful of renegade scientists who see aging as an engineering problem, not an inevitability. These are biohackers. If you're starting to realize that aging might just be another problem waiting to be solved, you're not alone. This is just the beginning. Tap subscribe now, because on this channel, I will keep sharing videos that will answer your questions about longevity and human health and performance and even consciousness. Because the battle over longevity isn't just happening in laboratories. It's happening in boardrooms, in government agencies, and in industries that profit from human frailty. But even if we cure aging, you have to ask, who gets access to it? Is this a technology for the elite, where only the wealthiest individuals can buy another 100 years of life? What happens to global economies when people stop dying? And then there's the biggest philosophical dilemma of all. Should we even want to live forever? For centuries, humans have told themselves that death gives life meaning, that our mortality pushes us to create, to love, to leave something behind. What if that was just a coping mechanism? What if we were never supposed to die in the first place? What if, as we became older, we gained wisdom and we could share that wisdom with others to make the world a truly magical place? That's what I believe. And I'd love to share more about it with you here.